Bible, I'd fly, man. But probably it ain't happening. Probably at the Cardinals game or the Cubs game. I can't think of anybody else that plays baseball. Thousands and thousands will be gathered, but probably not going to be an outbreak of revival there. Where would you think there might be an outbreak of revival? At a place where we come and we gather and we say, Oh, man, have we praised God today? Did you not feel the presence of God in this place? And then we go out unchanged. We go out the same as we came in. I'm telling you, God's getting tired of it. God is saying, man, how long? I'm not going to just keep passing by, and I'm not going to keep letting you plead ignorance. You say, I'm busy. I've got a life to live. God has a life to live, too. And his life is lived out in the people that he calls his church. You say, it's the government's fault. I knew you would say that. I left it out on purpose. Did you notice? You say, oh, see, we're so infected now by the government. Look at what he says. And I will rise with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. Who was he? The king. The government's not going to get out alive either. But I don't expect the government to be my spiritual advisor. The government ought to be calling the church to be the spiritual advisors. But the church isn't worthy right now. Man, we, we need to be on our face before God. I, I want to go to Luke. Oh, I thought I had that verse marked. I'm going to close with Jesus telling this story right here in his own words. Luke 12, 42 through 48. We're going to be done right now, so you've been very patient, and I appreciate it. Luke 12, 42 through 48. The Lord said, red, red letters if you have that, this is Jesus. Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household? to give them their portion of food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, who's he talking about, his servants? He's not talking about the world, he's talking about his church. He says, if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying. He's passing by again. I don't think he's really going to do what he says. Now, I read that into it. You understand. I know that. But Where am I at? Yes, but if, verse 45, If that servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. In case you had any doubts, this isn't about unbelievers. This is about believers. Because he says, I'll cut that man in half and appoint him with the unbelievers. Woo. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes but he who did not know yet committed these things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few for everyone to whom much is given from him much will be required and to whom much has been committed of him they will ask the more friends see, if, if we lived in deep dark Africa and we didn't know anything, and we didn't have but maybe a page of the New Testament, and maybe a page of the Old Testament, we would not be accountable. We would not be accountable for as much because we could literally say, I don't know. I just walk in what the Holy Spirit lays on my heart, and I try. See, that ain't going to cut it in America because we have the whole book. We have churches on every corner. There's probably twice as many churches as our gas stations in this country you turn on a radio you turn on a tv we were talking in there yesterday you know there's a lot of guys on the radio and tv i don't care to listen to but there's a few i like but you turn on you can get 24 hours of christian preaching and christian radio and then we say i don't know I, well how do you how do you know what god's will is anyway we have all the light there is, it's beaming on us. And then we plead ignorance. 
I would suggest to you today God will have no part of that. I would suggest to you today that the church of Jesus Christ, not the church of the Nazarene in Moravia, although it wouldn't hurt us either, but the church of Jesus Christ in America needs to wake up, look at the plumb line, see the standard God has set, and walk in the standards of God himself. Because one day, God's going to say to us as well, I will not pass by anymore. But he'll come on a day we're not looking, at an hour when we do not expect, and we will miss heaven because we played the game of church and didn't get serious with God. Stand with me this morning. Let's pray and seek his face. If you've got a name, if you've got a name and you want to put that name in to be prayed for, top third of the bulletin will come off. 